Hi, someone that I know recently contacted me uh, because they were having a little bit of trouble getting their head around a technology that has begun making its way out of the enterprise or business kind of area and is, uh, has made its way into the more consumer market now. Uh, the to no, that, te uh, that talk? No, that technology is known as RAID. Uh, no, I'm not talking about the bug spray. It's, uh, RAID is basically a method of taking a group of physical hard drives and basically pooling all of that data into what's known as a logical drive. So effectively you can take maybe two or three 300 gig hard drives and merge them into one single continuous logical volume of like three, of, uh, sorry, of like six to 900 gigs worth of uh, storage with, you know, without having to have it kind of physically separated, so to speak. Um, now, RAID comes, um, you can set up many different levels of, uh, of RAID. Uh, I'll get into a couple of the more common ones in a moment. Um, and basically, just explain why RAID is used. Now, the, the two main reasons is because, one, certain levels of RAID bring about a big improvement in performance uh, for reading and writing data, compared to just using a single hard drive. Um, the other one is that other levels of RAID can provide certain, a certain amount of fault tolerance. Now, fault tolerance basically means if you uh, say you have a hard drive that dies, um, you won't necessarily lose all the data in that logical drive because with, with some, of the RAID, uh, some of the RAID levels, it stores the data across multiple hard drives and it can usually, when you slot a replacement hard drive in, rebuild the information. Now, the, the two main ones that you'll encounter in a consumer environment will be what's known as RAID 0, which basically means you've taken all the hard drives and just uh, set up one large, one large vo uh, volume and um, there's no fault tolerance whatsoever, but it provides you with the largest capacity because it's all the hard drives uh, it provides you with um, the best performance for reading and writing as well. However, the problem is, if one of those hard drives dies, you lose all of that data. So you, you, know, you really have to be careful. Don't store anything that's important on there. Uh, the next one down is what's known as RAID 1. Now, RAID 1 basically means that you are what's... It's known as mirroring. Basically, you go... Usually it's done with just two hard drives and the contents of one hard drive is synced across to the contents of the other. So if one of the hard drives dies, you can just slot in the data and it will copy that over. It's basically, you know, basically you're carrying two copies of your data. Uh, it does mean that you lose half of the capacity in your machine, but how much is that data worth to you? Is it worth losing all of the uh, all the capacity so that you can at least keep that data around? Um, there's uh, there's also another one that people te uh, that people might encounter. It's known as RAID five. This is more commonly seen in the, the enterprise and the business kind of area. And I'll, I'll basically the gist of that is you can take a number of hard drives um, and it creates a single single volume, but you lose one of those hard drives for what's known as parity because it stores the content in what's known as striping across a number of the hard drives. So should one of them die, it'll kick in and rebuild the contents of the data from one of the hard, you know, from the data that's stored across all of the hard drives. And then you just slot another one in. Um, now, now that I've explained a bit more about what RAID is, um, my uh, actual friend that was uh, that was contacting me was just confused as to how Windows would uh, would work with RAID. Uh, he didn't know whether he needed to have just a separate hard drive that wasn't RAIDed, and then have RAID on the others. Would Vista work with it, and a few other things. Now, basically, um, as far as Windows, and Mac, and even Linux are concerned, a RAIDed hard drive is just a single hard drive that you can then just install onto and it's what's known as your host bus adapter it's the uh, the controller that basically allows you to you know that when you connect in the, uh, the hard drive using the cable that plugs into what's known as the host bus adapter 
or as it's abbreviated, HBA. Now, basically, all of that is handled on that, so Windows only ever just sees the volume that it, that it displays in what's known as uh, an array. So, you know, I hope I've explained it a bit better. Um, if I haven't, please let me know. Bollock me as well. I'll, uh, this is done quite late at night, and it's been a long day for me, so I hope I haven't mumbled and stumbled my way through it for you. Um, if you've got any questions, just ask, and uh, and hopefully I can answer them for you. Um, just con uh, just head on over to www.pissednerds.com, and I'll see you later. Bye.